we don't make it easy on drummers, right? As music directors, as band leaders, we say, hey, can you come play drums, play in time, have a smile on your face. Oh, and also do playback. Oh, and then also we want you to get one of these and play drum samples and be a quote unquote hybrid drummer, right? That's the cool new thing to do. Well, my heart breaks for drummers because we put so much on you. You have so much on your shoulders. Most of you can take it and handle it. And I want to try to help you out in this tutorial by showing you how to better integrate your Roland SPDSX with Ableton Live. Now, if you're using some sort of other drum trigger, the setup is gonna be really similar, um, but I wanna show you how to connect it with Ableton Live, and in particular, how to use Ableton Live to change presets uh, on your Roland SPDSX. So, uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to connect it to our computer via uh, a USB cable. But before we do that, in the case of the Roland SPD-SX, you're gonna to have to download a particular driver from Roland's site. I've linked to it in the description of this video. If you're using a different MIDI controller, unless your MIDI controller says it's USB class compliant MIDI, you're gonna to have to find a driver for that and download it and load it on your computer. Now, in the case of the SPD-SX, I've gotta change one setting before I even plug in my USB cable. So let's go to the menu. We're gonna press the menu button here and then go to setup and hit enter. And then we wanna go down to option and hit enter. Under USB mode here, we're gonna hit enter and we wanna make sure instead of being on wave manager, we are set on audio MIDI. So we'll hit enter and then we can back all the way back out of that. Now it's important to note that uh, with a SPD SX, you can use the USB connection uh, to connect your computer to load samples on it using wave manager. In our case, we're gonna use it for a MIDI connection. So. With all of that out of the way, now we can actually plug this physically into the SPD-SX. So we've got that connected. Now let's head over into Ableton and we're gonna open our preferences. So command comma to open preferences, uh, control comma if you're on a PC, and we wanna click the link tempo and MIDI tab. Now I've got my Play Audio One U connected here, but if I scroll down, you'll see we have our Roland SPD-SX. We wanna use port one here and we want to enable track, okay, on the input side of that. If we're gonna play things, if we wanna remotely control it, we can enable that. Now, for the sake of this particular tutorial, we're gonna actually scroll down to our output, though, because we're looking for our SPDSX, and we wanna make sure that track is enabled, okay? So there it is, SPDSX, and we're going to enable track, all right? So let's close that. Now, let's go to a MIDI track, and let's go down and let's go to MIDI 2 and we're gonna find our SPDSX, there it is. Um, we wanna figure out what channel this is gonna be on. Now by default, you're gonna choose channel 10, but in case your SPD is set to something different, let me show you how to find that. So hit menu, all right, go into setup, hit enter, go up to MIDI, hit enter, uh, and then hit the control, or excuse me, hit this button right here, and you're gonna see global channel, it says it's set to channel 10. So you could certainly change that if you wanted to, but you just wanna double check what that channel is. And then in Ableton under the MIDI 2 settings, you wanna make sure you've chosen your, your drum pad, your uh, SPDSX, and you've set that to channel 10, okay? Now, the way that we're gonna change presets is by creating clips and uh, having them send program changes from Ableton Live. So I could double click on this clip here Let's scroll down to the left-hand side of our screen of Clip View. We're looking for what's called our launch box. Now, depending on what version of Ableton you're on, it's gonna look a little different, but I'm in Live 12 for uh, this tutorial. We see three sections here, bank, sub bank, and program. We're gonna use just the program here, and I'm gonna type 20, because that's the kit that I wanna go to. Then let's go up to this clip. Let's rename it kit 20. Now let's double click to create another uh, clip and then scroll down and let's make this uh, kit 19. Okay, so we'll type program 19 and let's rename this kit 19. Okay, let's see if I can actually type properly and we'll get that set, there we go. So now what's cool about this is I'm going to trigger, uh, let's start with kit 19. I'm gonna click the clip launch button on this and I want you to watch the screen on the SPDSX. So as I clip that, uh, click that button, we're on kit 100. As I click that, that's gonna take us to kit 19. Now, as I click this next clip, that's gonna take us to kit 20. Um, this is really cool, but in and of itself, it's not incredibly, incredibly helpful. So what I would suggest is you actually create a template of all 100 kits using program changes, save that in Ableton. Um, if you want a template, 
uh, uh, already created for you. I'll share how you can get that in just a moment. But then here's the extra step I would take. So let's go back into Ableton and let's save this. And we'll call this SPD kit 19 and 20, okay? Let's save this on our desktop. Now I'm gonna open up a new live project and let's pretend this is a song and I'm gonna do some programming on this. So I could go to my browser. Uh, I can jump down to the bottom here to add folder and I can click that. And let's find that project we just created, in this case, SPD Kit 19 and 20. So we'll go down SPD Kit 19 and 20. We'll see this arrow to the left here. And um, let's find those MIDI clips that we programmed. There it is, 20 and 19. So let's load this into a track. Let's have this be Kit 19. Let's have this be Kit 20. All right, just a couple beats there. Then let's go to our output. Make sure we set this to SPD SX. Set that to that global channel that we discovered, in our case is channel 10. Then we're gonna make sure MIDI input is set to no input. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna press play. There is kit 19, and then we're coming up here on kit 20. There you go. So the beauty of this, and the reason you would wanna do this is so that as a drummer, your hands are full, right? There's so much you have to do. You can just stay focused on the music and stay in the moment. So I would suggest creating and establishing that connection to your computer. Uh, doing a little bit experimenting, testing that this works, then creating a full template of all the kits you'll think you'll ever need, and then use that template to program individual songs. Have presets and have kits change in the middle of the song if you want to, or just have one kit per each song and save that with your song so that when you go to program a full set, it's always the right sounds at always the right time. Now, if you want access to a full uh, program change template that's gonna have all 100 kits ready to go, plus you wanna learn not just how to change presets on the SPD, but how about how to use the SPD to change samples in Ableton Live? Um, how to use the Roland SPD-SX in a redundant setup? How to set up the SPD-SX on stage on your drum riser and have your playback rig 100 feet away uh, stage left. I'm gonna show you how to do all that and more in my brand new course where I show you how to use, yes, the Roland SPD-SX with Ableton Live, but really teach some fundamental principles that you can apply to any drum trigger module or pad that you wanna use with Ableton Live. So if you wanna get access to that, you can become a From Studio to Stage All Access student. You could click the link in the description below to learn more and to get access to that template, that course, plus everything else we have available on the site. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.